Previously on Drake Paragon. We just push off from this really, really nice anchorage. Oh my god! It just looks like land on the radar. Instead, it is an iceberg. Look at that hairdo, man! Fog seems to be thickening. You can't see a damn thing. It is cold, cold, cold out here. The boom broke. We gotta get that fixed. It's gonna require welding. a really tight navigation fjord you can see the route that I've made I hope we're not going to have lots of current to deal with and I hope fog isn't going to be an issue but that's our next 20 miles or so what do you see? All those little pieces up there, yeah. it's hard to tell from here exactly how big they are. Aye. They may not be very big at all. But I also remember reading somewhere that a lot of times like something that looks really small on the surface can be more dangerous because it's actually knife-like because it's, I don't know, it's so close to the surface of the water that it's going over and like shaving it off into like a, a point. You know, like when you're sucking on a yeah. candy can, it gets really sharp. I see. So sometimes those can be even more dangerous than like the big ones. Hmm. But yeah, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. It's hard to see. I see like at least twenty-seven. Okay. This is the nice. Keep a good look out. You're doing a great job. <laughs> My fleece skirt was a little damp. I was up against the wall, so I couldn't put it on. I don't know where my um. So you're cold, you're saying? My legs are a little cold, but I'm fine. I don't know where my rain pants are. I'm put your bib on. In there. It's like Superman's homeworld on the ice planet or something. So many icebergs, bergy bits, fog, mountains. It's like nothing like I ever seen before. <laughs> Not in North Carolina anymore. Security, security, security. And the rest was in Greenlandic. He sounds like a coast radio station though. He's not like a boat close to us, I don't think. I'm oh, sorry. Go for it. Make him some hot water if you want. You're included in the pot. Thank you. Freezing, huh? Jeez, what are you doing? <laughs> what I do is it just gets the blood flowing back into my fingers again. The other one I do, the kids love it because you make them stand like this, yeah. your arms together, yeah. and when you bend your wrist, I think you kind of bend the veins if you go like that. Yeah. And it makes you feel like your hands are getting warm and you look like a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it works like if you're before you get on a river or when you're getting off a river or getting on windsurfing or sailing in the water. Really? Like, like, you warm yourself up. Shake. Yeah. <laughs> and you look like a penguin. You look like a penguin. So. <laughs> a little bit of ice there.
floating pieces of ice. We we'll probably count at least 50 of them all around us. Incredible. <laughs> How are you getting on, Monique? Got some icebergs coming up. We're kind of going off in that direction, and there's like... It's crazy, there's like icebergs everywhere here, right? <laughs> I think we're going to be seeing more and more as we go south. Yeah. Or at least we're getting used to them now. have to go around him. <laughs> autopilot sending us straight for him. Disengage the autopilot. There you go. We will leave him to port. <laughs> He's a big one. Wow. Beautiful. And they're all so unique. If 80% of the iceberg is underneath the water, can you imagine how deep that thing is? I mean, we're in 215 feet of water here. It's just hard to imagine that that's only 20% of the entire thing. A little scary to think that sometimes they just flip. <laughs> Wouldn't want something large flipping so close to us. So maybe we're a bit too close, but we gotta get around them. That one's really beautiful. He has a right of way. That's a cute bird, huh? Yeah, there was a seal in front of it. Really? I tried to catch him, but I don't think it did. It's wild to think that 80% of that thing is underneath the water. Okay, now that we've cleared the iceberg, we can get back on course. That's neat. See how it's breaking up on the left and on the right? Once upon a time it was much larger. I wonder how many thousands of gallons of fresh water are contained inside of an iceberg that large. And lots of little baby ones, maybe haven't broken off of the big one. Little baby icebergs. There they are. Do you want some hot water, hot noodle soup, something else to eat, anything? I'm thinking of hot noodle soup. I'm thinking maybe some noodles. Do you want some? Mo? Yeah. Aw, oh, yeah. That's some good ones. Got them all in the line jumping out of the water. Wow. Uh, it's a really dark though.
so we're trucking along at about five and a half knots over ground. The fog is coming in kind of like waves. <laughs> it comes in and you can see maybe a quarter of a mile and, and then it kind of goes out. Haven't been able to see more than about a half a mile in quite some time, but I'll take a half a mile. It's better than a boat length. There are seals all around us. Two just pop their heads out over there. I, I can't get them fast enough. There was a whole, I don't know if it's a pod. Oh man, I don't know if I should just grab the camera immediately. But two big pods of seals, probably like, I don't know, 20 or 30 in each one. And there were two groups and they were hunting. It was so cool to see. Dolphins! It was off of the starboard. Bow, two o'clock. He just popped up. Maybe it was a, a tiny whale. Like one of those teeny, teeny, tiny whales that look like big dolphins. Oh, the mini whales. The mini whales. So, today has been my day of shouting. Dolphins, seals, blah. Actually, just seals. Oh, yeah, did you see it? Yep. Anyway, so over here, we have some pretty magnificent icebergs. I changed course just a little bit to give them a nice wide berth, but there's that one over there that is just massive and just such a deep blue. It is cool, cool, cool. It actually looks a little bit like a clipper ship. So, oops. So as you can see, those are a little, a little foggy. That's about half a mile away. There's some sort of a dolphin or maybe uh, those small whales. I don't, I don't remember what they're called. It's been keeping us company now for about five minutes. We'll see if he shows himself a little bit more. But beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. A little cold, but beautiful. How are we doing? Are we almost there? Mm, we'll be in Julian Harbor in about, in about standby. In about when? In about, hold on, please. Uh, ETA, Julian Harbor, one hour, 17 minutes, uh, arriving at 3.49 p.m. That's We're making nice. good time. Yeah. Uh, on the run line. Even and, turning around and looking at seals. It's only eight, eight miles on the run line, so that's well within VHF range of anybody in Julian Harbor. I hope the harbor master is home, or rather not home, but rather <laughs> in his office and waiting. Where for he mail. should be waiting for our hapless cruisers on a Sunday afternoon. Julian harbor master, Julian harbor master, Julian Hope harbor master. This is sailing vessel Paragon on one six over. Are you sure it's 1 6? Julian Pat. Uh, either 16 or 12, according to the cruising guide. Julian Hub Harbor Master, Julian Hub Harbor Master, Julian Hub Harbor Master, sailing vessel Paragon, Paragon, channel 1 6, over. Now, you might also be getting blocked by the mountains. Sailing vessel claiming you are in a half hour master. I think you should try calling channel one two, channel one two. Many thanks, many thanks. Uh, Paragon switching one two. You're welcome, sir. This is Western Radio, by the way. <laughs> Who's that? Julian Hub Harbor Master, Julian Hub Harbor Master, Julian Hub Harbor Master, this is sailing vessel Paragon, Paragon, channel 1 2, over. Trans 
transmitting on 25 watts. Julian Hub Hogger Master, Julian Hub Hogger Master, Julian Hub Hogger Master. This is sailing vessel Paragon, 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 channel 1 2, over. So much better than cup of noodles, man. Yeah. Long time for everyone. We have another cool looking arch on the port side there. Like to take a fast rib right through that arch. The only thing is sometimes they fall. Julian Hub Radio, Julian Hub Radio, Julian Hub Radio. Sailing vessel Paragon, Paragon, channel 16, over. Maybe everybody goes home at 2 on a Sunday. It's now quarter past 3. In 20 minutes it will be 3.46. Plenty of daylight left. Motor around the harbor, explore. This is Cruise, this is Coast Radio, this is Russian Coast Radio Station, good afternoon. Would you please go channel 25, channel 25. Thank you, switching to 25. Asia. Hello, ASEAN Radio, thank you for answering my call. We are sailing vessel headed for Julian Hob Harbor. We're about 20 minutes away now. We tried calling the Harbor Master and were unable to raise him on channel 16 or 12. And I don't know if I can ask you, but do you, do you know what our options are for moorings or tying up in Julian Hob Harbor? Over. Uh, call the Hubble service uh, by phone, they should, uh, they should have a uh, watch Julie telephone, but uh, nobody is answering the phone number. But as I see it, you, I think you should just try to go in and as uh, soon as you can uh, find somewhere to um, to call to and uh, wait there. Uh, well, just do it and then uh, somebody will probably be contacting you tomorrow. <laughs> Please have the name of your vessel again. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, our vessel name is Paragon. P A R A G O N. We're from the United States and we cleared in in commute. Over? Alright, yes. So, Paragon, uh, you cleared in in commute. And, uh, well, as I just said before, I think your best chance would be just to uh, proceed uh, into harbor and find a nice spot to where you can you can let the anchor go, or maybe even uh, some place uh, alongside. I don't know how the situation is, how about uh, the situated 
Asiat Coast Radio Station is right there. I guess that was one of the main one, but there don't seem to be any of the satellites operational anymore. There used to be a big one in Karaktak right here, but according to her, they're the only ones left. Wonder why. Well, she was friendly. That was nice. Just like I can't help you, but uh, you know I understand your situation. And if I was you, maybe I'd just like you know go in, and I'm sure you'll find something. <laughs> I think they provide some amount of weather information. I guess your the emergency number. They're available to vessels of all types in Greenland. Because there is no coast guard to call, as far as I know. Wow, I see Karakta emerging from the fog. It looks much larger than our so I don't know if we're going to anchor or wrap up or grab a mooring or tie on to uh, up here. Asiat Radio doesn't know what the deal is and the harbor master is not home. Or maybe he is home, he's just not answering the radio. Asiat Radio was nice though. She said that she called Karaktak Julian Hub the Harbor Master phone number and he wasn't answering the phone. So that was nice. I guess it's being a Sunday late afternoon. It's just uh, probably not on duty. Um, so I don't, know, I don't know what we're doing for, uh, for tonight when we get in there, but I'm sure we'll find something. Small fishery jetty is kept busy by many small craft and is not suitable for yachts, nor is the quote unquote marina in the area behind the breakwater, which is filled with small local craft. The Atlantic Pier is reserved for large commercial vessels, while the schooner pier is usually lined with fishing vessels and local passenger boats. It says it may be possible to tie up at the root of the new container key. Nothing on the chart that says container key. Julian Hub Harbor is approximately is 
approximately a thousand or eight hundred feet in diameter. So it's not that big. It's mm -hmm. a small harbor. It's not like Boston Harbor. It's more like Gloucester. Mm -hmm. Go check it out. Yeah. Next on Drake Paragon.